Welcome back to the Game Collection. Super Mario RPG is a game that I've known about for years. I just never really got around to playing it, though. It came up recently during a live stream, and it's been weighing on me ever since, so why don't we give this game a shot and see if it's any good? I am Super Derek, and this is Super Mario RPG. In March of 1996, Nintendo released Super Mario RPG in Japan and then in the United States only two months later. What was this game? Is it Super Mario or is it an RPG? Well, it was developed by Squaresoft and then published by Nintendo of America. It was an odd mashup of contrasting ideas that we wouldn't see the likes of again until the Kingdom Hearts series years later. But I've already talked about those games in another series. Super Mario RPG was the love child of Square and Nintendo. Square was having trouble replicating their success in Western markets, and Miyamoto was interested in seeing Mario realized in an RPG world. And with Square being the undisputed king of RPGs at the time and Mario's market domination, it was a match made in heaven. Super Mario RPG begins the way most Mario games do. Princess Toadstool was captured by Bowser, and it's up to Mario to save her. But just moments into the game, Mario rescues Peach, and a giant sword crashes down into Bowser's castle, flinging our far-flung heroes flying far into the atmosphere and far from the fortress, now festooned with a fancy fencing falchion. Mario soon learns that this was the work of the Smithy Gang, who in the process also destroyed Star Road, preventing any new wishes from being granted. Picking matters even worse, the Smithy Gang is also terrorizing towns all over the world. Now Mario will have to collect the seven stars to restore Star Road and restore peace to the land. Along the way, Mario makes some new friends who join him on his quest, including Mallow, the young cloud boy who thinks he's a tadpole, and Gino, the action figure and crowd pleaser who comes from afar to lend Mario a helping hand. Also accompanying Mario on his journey are none other than Bowser, the King of the Koopa Troop, and Princess Peach Toadstool. The story of Super Mario RPG is very simple and easy to follow. I've already told you about 70% of what there is to know, and you can probably infer the rest. This isn't the kind of game where the spoilers are going to really matter for most people. The story was written with the intention of appealing to Western audiences of the 90s, and in that regard, they were very successful. Super Mario RPG may be one of the best RPGs for beginners out there, even to this day. But not just because the plot was easy to follow, though. The writing in Super Mario RPG is very funny. It may in fact be one of the first few RPGs to help establish that quirky, funny RPG subgenre, along with Earthbound. The character interactions between Mario and Bowser in particular are both endearing and funny to read. I enjoy the portrayal of Bowser attempting to keep up appearances around Mario and Peach, but also secretly having a good heart. Some of the characters were pretty two-dimensional overall, such as Mallow, but again, I think this was intentional to help keep the overall experience a simple and straightforward one. Besides the funny story and familiar characters, Nintendo and Square implemented some new gameplay mechanics that further helped hook American audiences timed button presses during combat that could significantly increase the damage dealt to enemies and severely reduce the amount of damage received from attacks. The mechanic actually reminded me of my time with Shadow Hearts, except the visual cues when to press the buttons aren't quite as easy to spot, so it takes some guessing and hoping that you figure out the right timing for some of the attacks. For the spells and such though, you can find out the bonus timing from the skill descriptions, which is pretty handy. Super Mario RPG wasn't a terribly difficult game, but you'll probably want to make sure you have a low latency way to play the game, or things could get much more difficult. Outside of combat, there is some light platforming here and there, but the truth of the matter is that it's not very uh, good, because isometric visuals do not lend themselves well to precise jumping. And if you need further proof of that, take a look at Exhibit B, Landstalker on Sega Genesis. 
But luckily, Super Mario RPG did not make platforming a central focus, so it was only a mild annoyance from time to time. The remainder of the game consists of some other mini-games including swimming down a waterfall to collect coins, jumping on barrels, and racing a Yoshi. And that was also a little bit of a nightmare, but I think I figured out a trick to that. Also, this minigame will absolutely require a low latency display. The world presented in Super Mario RPG is bright and beautiful and isometric. This style of world reminds me of the worlds shown in Breath of Fire 3 and 4, but without any camera controls to be found for obvious reasons. The towns are nice and bright, but most look pretty similar to the next. However, dungeons are far more creative and distinct from one another. The game's use of isometry is perhaps one of its most visually distinctive features, but that's only part of the unique look that's become so familiar to us today. The graphics were also partially inspired by those of Donkey Kong Country, which used Silicon Graphics workstations to render 3D models of Donkey Kong and company. That very same Silicon Graphics workstation was actually given to the Super Mario RPG team with which to render the sprites of the heroes, enemies, and even more throughout the game. Using pre-rendered polygonal sprites in an isometric world may be one of the most ambitious uses of the Super Nintendo hardware, falling only just short of maybe games that use the Super Effects chip. The large and unique looking pre-rendered sprites are expressive and put to fantastic use throughout the game, particularly as Mario explains his complex stories through pantomime, lampooning the silent protagonist trope that this game adopted. Not to be outdone by the visuals of Super Mario RPG, Yoko Shimamura, who had previously worked for Capcom on Breath of Fire, went to work composing music for Super Mario RPG. She now considers her time working on Super Mario RPG as a turning point in her career. And for good reason. She would go on to work on the Kingdom Hearts games as well as future Mario RPGs. The music included in Super Mario RPG is immediately recognizable and is as iconic as the visuals within Super Mario RPG. So much so that I played through this entire game for the first time and recognized almost every single song from other old YouTube videos that I watched long ago. The music matches the mood of the themes of Super Mario RPG's aesthetic to the T. It's fun, it's upbeat, and it's quirky. Fun, upbeat, and quirky. Those are the three best adjectives that I can find to describe not only the music, but Super Mario RPG as a whole. Sometimes I approach games like this, games with a reputation, with some amount of apprehension. By now, most everybody already has an opinion about the game, and sometimes too much hype can kill an experience. But despite Super Mario RPG having a reputation that precedes it, I don't think that it was in fact overhyped for me at all. Some people claim that it's one of the best RPGs on the Super Nintendo, and while that's definitely a tall order, I can say that I think I agree. It is one of the best RPGs on the system. It's also short and sweet, and it doesn't overstay its welcome. Super Mario RPG is one of those experiences where every moment you spend playing is spent experiencing something new in the game. And perhaps all of these reasons are why Super Mario RPG went on to outsell every other Squaresoft RPG on the Super Nintendo. And perhaps the success of Super Mario RPG is what prepared Western markets for the flood of amazing RPGs that we would see coming on the Sony PlayStation. Would Final Fantasy VII have sold nearly as well if it didn't have Super Mario RPG as a warm-up act? Well, we may never know the answer to that question, but there is one question left that I can answer for you guys, and that's that Super Mario RPG has easily earned itself a spot in the game collection.